Welcome back, my animal devotees. We're back once again on our animal-only account, where we tried using only animal characters to beat Genshin Impact, and more importantly, make me and you an emo of my emo jokes. So last time, I completed the heart of Watatsumi World Quest in Watatsumi Island. We went through each of the islands and broke each of the seals. The quest was pretty standard, but I struggled a lot against the ocean and mimics. Yo, please. Sayu! Hello? Don't tell me the enemies respawn after. What is the more- <laughs> After the whole team got wiped, I had to try again, but ultimately was able to clear out the world quest. Since I built a healer Hazel, I was able to progress through the Spiral Abyss and breeze through floors 5 to 8 without any issues since my characters were over leveled. So now, with floor 8 of the Spiral Abyss completed, we just had one last goal before we could say goodbye to Genshin's version 3.7 patch. And yes, that is to finally get our hands on Kazuha. Um, that didn't sound right. So I might have made you guys an emo by doing this to you last time. But I did get a lot of new followers, so shout out to everyone that follow me on Twitch and also Twitter. Anyways, for the rest of you that didn't follow me, I still owe you guys an answer. But first, we had to finish one last thing. In order to get to the Enkonomia region, we went back to talk to Tsuyuko, the Shrine Maiden on Watatsumi Island. We had to look for the remaining key sigils scattered around the island to complete the world quest. Luckily for us, we could just commit daylight robbery without defeating any of the enemies here to snatch the key sigils away. So we could just do this. Cause there's way too many of them. Let me get us in peace. No! Oh, I got, got it. I walked up to the places with the key sigils in their respective locations and returned to talk to Tsuyuko in order to complete the world quest. First, we drained the water, and after that, we had to descend into Enkonomia. But before we do that, I chose to do something else before I go to Enkonomia. So I know I made a lot of you guys an email last video because of the cliffhanger for my Kazuha pose. So I owe you all an apology, and also a reveal on whether or not I won my 50 50. Before that, I'm not sure if you remember this from last episode. I'm gonna guess. So this is my prediction, my own prediction. I'm gonna get Kazuha at like 76, and uh, it's gonna be a 50-50 win. Yeah, I made this bold prediction to win a 50-50 and get Kazuha at exactly 76 pity before I even pulled. So after pulling for 72 times, here's my last 10 pull before I inevitably get a 5 star. I don't believe getting doubles, but I'll just do a 10 pull anyways. But this is 82. So 73? It's gonna come at 70. Six, I said. 74. 75. And then 76 is gonna be Kazuha, and then that's gonna be a 50 50 win. So next pull is Kazuha. I can already see through it. See? And the L's are all to you, people that bet knows as well. So, you guys are eating your own L's. Oh, I got Favonia Sword as well. But who knows? Maybe I'll get a double. How? Because I'm very knowledgeable in Genshin. Okay, I didn't get double, but I want my 50 50 again, so. With that 50 50 win, we finally got Kazuha, our eighth animal character in the roster. So after getting him, I just stuffed some artifacts on him and leveled him up. Now it's finally time to start the Enkonomia questline. First, I just descended into Enkonomia by jumping down this cliff. We landed in a pool and made our way to unlock the first teleport waypoint. Before moving on, I started by testing out my damage against the Enkonomia enemies. Okay, I need to fight these. I don't really need to fight these uh, muscular bishop dudes, but I'm gonna fight them anyways because they drop the materials I just want to collect. We actually defeated the enemies here pretty quickly, so I was kind of impressed. But I replaced my traveler with Faruzan since she can buff our animal team. She immediately made a difference in my damage, since now I could do 14k normal attacks. I really need a C6 though. I think if I have C6, my, my wanderer can do 20k normal attacks. Because right now he does like 10k, right? If I create, I can probably do 20k. I actually want to check how many standard I have. Standard fates. Because if I have 10, then I might consider pulling for the potential fouls on... Okay, I have 7. Never mind. Oh, wait, maybe I can get... Oh, yeah. If I ascend... Where's Kazuo at? If I ascend Kazuo to level... 40? Not 40. Uh, 80? Maybe I'll be able to get all three of these. And then I'll be able to... Pull, right? I spent a few minutes completing some exploration mini games to unlock some chests and try to collect some primo gems. I'm lost. I haven't come to Enkid. Oh, what's happening? Oh, just a cussing. I thought Raiden got math for me, I mean, somehow for no reason. I right, just wasted my skill. Next, we went to investigate nearby areas and activated some sigils on a wall. We had to do this a few more times and also cleared out a few specters along the way. With our new Kazuha, the specters were way easier to group up, so it made killing them easier with Wanderer as well. 
Later on, we could also open the gates into the Ankonomia ruins. Like exploring new regions, we had to collect a bunch of chests that were scattered throughout the area. So it was like some nice bonus primo gems for us. We eventually got to the big gate and unlocked the main region in Ankonomia. As we flew deeper in, we continued our farming for a little bit and collected a few more chests. Exploring in Ankonomia was way easier than the other Inazuma regions. Let me try this. Kazuha? Oh. <laughs> This is why you pull for Kazuha, because he can do the tricks like those. I just boop the enemies down. Maybe it's because I got Kazuha now, but everything just felt easier. Okay, does these things, whatever I'm seeing, what? these things. I don't know what those are called. Do these count as exploration progress? I'm scared. They're like the more annoying Oculus or something. Since I'm in Kanomia, I have to look out for these key sigils to collect as well, since I may need them in the future. Next, we have to go deeper into the ruins, and to do so, we have to clear out the enemies in front of us. While beating them up, our Kazuha also leveled up as well, so we basically just slowly ascended Kazuha while exploring this new region. Before we could enter into the ruins, we had to defeat an Abyss Mage. The Pyro Shield was a bit tough to break, but since we are countless characters, it wasn't that bad. Inside the ruins, we met Enjo, who immediately strikes me as someone that's sus. He told us to go investigate surrounding areas in Ankonomia, and also solve some puzzles. We then opened a chest to obtain a Golden Brittle, after that, we went back into the library and spoke to Angel again. We had to chase after Angel so we went further into Ankonomia. So as I went deeper, I also unlocked some more waypoints as well along the way. The enemies in this region were all pretty thick, so it got a bit hairy for me. Can't speak right now, my flower zone is almost dead. I'm playing a mini Nuzlocke right now. If I die, then I have to leave Ankonomia. No, if anybody dies, I will stop exploring for the day. Nevertheless, I was able to cross the bridge and meet up with Injo in front of the gate. So one of the last things we did in Ankonomia was to fight the three rune guards in order to open the chest. This was a pretty fun fight because the enemies actually took a bit before they died. So we were able to unleash a lot of bursts until we defeated them. We reached the middle of Ankonomia and met back up with Angel and changed the time to night as well. Here we also met a brand new character, Aru as well, who assigned even more quests for us to do. But before we continue on, I just decided to stop a quest line here for now and do something else. So I took a break from exploring Ankonomia and went to finish the version 3.7 events. In this event, we could configure the difficulty of each boss. But as an emo, I didn't want to challenge a boss that were too hard. Alright, I only need 1000 points, right? So, there. Wait, actually? I'll just do this. 1,000 points is enough. I don't need anything else. This might have been a mistake, since it was too easy for us. Okay, this is actually pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> am I, did I make this too easy? Or maybe is it me, or are we just stronger now? So I fought the other boss as well, and aimed for a higher score against the Eon Blight Drake. The boss started to resist animal attacks, so it became a bit of a problem. Ow. Fortunately, the boss was still on easy mode, so I was able to slowly chip his HP down and beat it in the end. Next up was the twin vicious bosses that teams up to bite you with its tails. I was scared of them at first, but soon realized they weren't that hard. No, don't revive. Okay, this boss is so easy actually. I went back to fight a shiny ocean head because I wanted more rewards, but the results were the same. If it's easy, then get an expert. <laughs> Why would I suffer for extra materials when you can just run around farming the ores? Is that better? I'd rather just run around get collecting the ores and just suffer in here. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why is my wandering doing, so, doing like 17k? That's like the most damage I've seen. What? Am I just strong now? I was actually in awe since I didn't even know Wanderer could be that strong with a mono animal team. Lastly, we had to fight all of the previous bosses back to back to back. But surely they won't be that difficult, right? Well, the first boss was the hardest, since I put the most multipliers on it. But we still got through it without any troubles at all. The Young Bright Drake was a bit more difficult, and I got too complacent. So this happened. I thought I could heal. I'm betrayed. Ow, ow. Oh, well, never gonna use Farozan until I get some heals in. But I, if I, my Farozan dies, then that would be bad, right? Yeah, my Farozano is always getting the shorter end of the stick, but trust me, this isn't a skill issue or anything because I had no idea what this boss's patterns were. Ow, what? What? What is that? I can't. Hello? I couldn't move at all. Like, what was that? So the Young Blight Drake is confirmed better than Venti at sucking enemies? Probably should've swapped to Wanderer, but like... 
I thought my Trevor could move out, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't move. I just kept on getting sucked back in. That's like Vinti or something that I'm experiencing. Is that what like the Hidden Shows are experiencing every time we use Venti? The final stage was a breeze, and I even had some shell screen time for you as well. Okay, let's see how much my shell plunges. My shell plunges around the same damage my Wanderers' normal attack is. But shell has better AoE though. And also he's not as built as Wanderer. With our boss rush event completed, it's finally time for co-op again, where I get carried, <coughs> I mean farm weekly boss materials in my co-op, and also finish some weekly bounties to farm for my reputation level. We also go do some artifacts domain for my animal characters as well. So I got some people to join my co-op from Twitch, and started out with some dailies. Since we're in co-op, we got through the dailies pretty quickly. We also farm some leyline for the EXP books as well, since there was a times 2 bonus event going on for the rewards. Next, we went to farm the artifact domain in the desert. And the enemies here were pretty tough, especially in co-op. With my team, we were eventually able to get through the fight, but unfortunately we didn't get any good drops. Afterwards, we went to farm the weekly reputation quests. First, we had to fight Sparky, the Electro Lava Troll, and just as you expected, there was one casualty among us. Yeah, I see you, Faruzan. But anyways, we eventually defeated Sparky. The next mechanical squid monsters were pretty easy, since they weren't immune to any animal damage. Lastly, we went to spar with Sparky for the second time. He was hanging out near the water area, so we were able to swirl Hydro to defeat him. I joined one of my co-op teammates' world to fight myself, and as always, our co-op teammate carried us through this fight. The second phase, however, was a different story. I wanna do Azdaha because we can get carried. And we don't have to take like 20 minutes. Okay. I ran out of stamina. Thanks, I did all the work. Next, we went to fight Raiden. And as always, she is a tough nut to crack. In this timeline, Kazuha sadly died to Raiden's attacks. Yeah, I don't mind Kazuha just chilling in middle right there. We had to go all the way to the second phase. But luckily, Wonder is able to do this to evade Raiden's attacks. Uh, I felt kind of bad for the Fire Zone, cause she's just missing all her jumps. Anyways, we got to the end of the fight with two players alive, and successfully got her drops. Last but not least, I took my healer Hazel to fight Azdaha. And as the only healer in my team, this will be the first two tests to see how good my Hazel heals. The first phase was a breeze, and we quickly phased it. The pyro phase was also pretty easy. I just stayed at a safe distance, and survived without getting hit. The last phase, however, was the hardest. Okay, Cryo... It's hard. Let's not get hit by that. If you get hit by that, you're most most likely dead. But it shouldn't be that hard to dodge because... Oh, never mind. I should be alive still. I have 30k HP. That just tickled me. It's not gonna kill me. Alright. Uh, I thought I was gonna do a tail swipe. Oh, never mind. Throwing some ice shards out. Stay far away from that thing. And also look at the tail. It's gonna slam down soon. Oh, shoot missiles as well, maybe? No! Maybe okay. Look at that clutch heal. Oh, never mind. My heal is healing less than the damage. <laughs> How? How do you guys all get hit? Okay, all my teammates have skill issues. Now it's only me and Faruzan left. And with a boss with only a sliver of health left, let's see if we can defeat this boss as a duel. Alright, you guys are welcome for the carry. Seon and I carried. But yeah, as always, thanks to my co-op teammates for the carries. And if you want to also carry an emo votee, make sure to come over to my Twitch to learn how you can also be in a video. To finish off version 3.7, I also went to complete this domain event to try and get some last minute primo gems. Soon after, we have encountered a problem. In these domains, we have forced trial characters with no options to switch. Luckily, we could cheese this domain by doing this. So I'm just... Like, for the stages without animal characters, I'm just banking on using this to kill the enemies and gain points. But this one shots the enemies, right? So it should be good. The first stage had Kazuha, so we were able to clear this domain with the help of the photo mode. The second stage, however, was a struggle for us. I basically had to run around the domain and avoid confrontation with our enemies to waste time, to eventually be able to do this. Oh, okay, I filled up. I can move the camera, right? Yes. 
300 points. Oh, more, more, more. More damage. I'll do like that. Unfortunately, I messed up a bit and this happened. Alright. Snap the head on this character as well. No! Come here! Get here! Hello? You're wasting my burst! Hello? Wow. So the Nubushi didn't die, so I had to waste another 30 or so seconds running around him to kill him with another camera shot. But yeah, I had to repeat this process a few more times in different stages. But we were eventually able to collect all the Primo Gems from the event. Genshin's version 3.7 definitely felt a bit slow overall, but I achieved both of my goals for this version, which is to clear 408 of the Sparrow Abyss and also getting my 8th animal character Kazuha. With version 3.8, we'll most likely pull for an extra constellation for Wanderer since he's my main DPS. But I'm not sure whether or not to pull for his weapon, or just save for 4.0, since a certain animal character was introduced as well. So yeah, let me know in the comments on what I should do with my Primo Gems, and I'll take that into consideration. I still have to finish up some Inazuma quests like Enkonomia and begin exploring Tsurumi Island. So if you like this series and want to see it continue, make sure to like the video and let me know in the comments. And subscribe to the channel to start making me an emo. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you hopefully in the next one.